Hello, I'm Carl Seibert. Welcome back to the second part of our video series on keywording in Photomechanic. In part one, we went through all the different ways that we could use so-called flat keywording in Photomechanic. In this video, we'll be doing hierarchical keywording, or as Photomechanic calls it, structured keywording. Hierarchical keywording allows you to add a path of keywords to an image in one go. It also allows you to organize big keyword collections. Now, if we remember from our introductory contemplation of keywords, it's probably not a good idea in most cases to have a huge keyword collection, but some photographers are just going to have to. Maybe they work in stock, maybe they work in nature and wildlife, and they're dealing with taxonomies of animals and living things of some sort or another, or maybe even something like automobiles, which tend to organize themselves in taxonomies. So let's just take a look at this thing. Command Option K, or on a PC, Control Alt K, brings up the Structured Keywords dialog. You can also call it, from the Image menu, Structured Keywords panel. And here we have a big, complicated dialog. Let's take a look at this thing. The middle of our dialog is arranged in columns, and we have, amazingly enough, keywords. And the keywords are hierarchically arranged. So here we have family, which are the keywords to be used in my collection of family snapshots. Under family, we have another layer of keywords. And if we select one, we find yet another layer and another. If we double click on a keyword in this part of the dialog, it will add the path to that keyword to the path section of the dialog. Now, you noticed I double clicked on garden and it added the path to that point, family, home, garden. It did not go forward to plants. If I double click on plants, I'll get the path to there, but not to flowers and trees. Do you see what I mean? A little further down the dialog, we have something called the collection. And it has a clear button, which we will use right now. The collection is like the left-hand pane in the Edit Keywords dialog. These are the keywords that are actually going to be applied to your pictures. And we have a button that can add the path that we have selected to the collection. Or we can simply add the rightmost selected keyword. In other words, I clicked on garden and home and family are still highlighted, but garden is what I selected. I can add that keyword to the collection. And as we saw before, a double click will add the whole path to the collection straight away. And that is because that's the behavior I chose for a double click in this settings pull down down here. Over to the right, we can apply the keywords that we have chosen to our pictures. We can apply the path, that's this, directly to the photos. We can apply the keyword, that's that, the rightmost keyword, directly to the photos. Or what we're probably gonna do most of the time is we're going to apply the collection to the selected photos because we may build the collection by selecting a couple of keywords in the list. Now, if you'll notice, let's say that I have a picture that has to do with the swamp behind my house and I add swamp or swamp's path to the collection 
Photo Mechanic strips out duplicates. So we can go through adding keywords to our collection, merrily double-clicking our way along. And we don't need to worry about duplicates along the path. Now, we also have another concept in our structured keywords that we don't have in our flat keywords, and that is synonyms. So if I go on vacation in West End, which is near where I live, we have a synonym for West End that tells us that it's in the Bahamas. Now, mind you, it's a dangerous thing to use keywords for places. Locations have their own fields in the IPTC schema. And in general, it's not a good idea to mix data around. And most of the time, your places should go in the location fields where they belong. But there are always exceptions. This particular collection of photos is one of them. And I've chosen very deliberately to include places in my keywords in this particular collection. We talked about that when we were contemplating keywords as well. We'll jump back down here. We'll look at a couple of more settings. We can apply our keywords to the keywords field, gee whiz. We can also apply them to the captions field. And that is a legitimate thing. Certain workflows in certain companies, certain applications, you will want to do that. And in fact, I worked at such a place, and indeed, when we used keywords in that place, we generally put them in the caption field. Here we have our append tick box. It's like the append tick box in the stationary pad, or the append option in the other two keywording dialogues that we've looked at. Most of the time, you want append turned on because keywords are a thing that you build. You tend to keyword at the end of your metadata workflow, and you may keyword in a couple of passes. But there are times when you want to overwrite your keywords, and in that case, you have that option. The thing to remember here is just to look at this and make sure that it is set the way you want it to be set. Here we have synonym behavior. Do we want to apply synonyms along the entire path? Do we only want to apply synonyms that appear at the end of the path? Or do we want to turn off applying synonyms? If I choose West End here with synonyms turned on, I get Bahamas regardless. They're sort of joined at the hip. You can unjoin them with that setting if you want to. I'm not sure why you would want to generally, because generally you put the synonyms there for a reason. And you notice I've hit this clear button a few times. That's another thing to watch out for. As you're going through photos and you're keywording your merry way along, sometimes you won't remember to clear the collection and you will end up adding paths of keywords to the last collection that you applied and you'll end up messing things up and you'll have to go back and start over or correct some of your work. Now, at the top of this dialogue, we have perhaps the coolest thing. If you have really a lot of keywords, we have a search function and we can find our way through our keywords. If you turn exact match off, you can turn frac you can type in fractions of potential keywords and go ahead and hit enter or hit the find button and you get find results now these are all of the paths that have that keyword or that fraction of a keyword and you get to choose if you remember back in our contemplation of keywords we talked about stingray which could be a corvette which is a Chevy, which is a car, and it's an automobile and a bunch of other things. But Stingray could also be a fish or a fish-like creature. So we need to be able to choose the path that we want. And in this particular case, I was actually thinking when I typed the first few letters of Spain, of Port of Spain Trinidad. 
So if we double click that in that chooser, it takes us to indeed that keyword and its path. So there you go. It was family, it was a vacation, it was in Trinidad, and it was in Port of Spain. Once again, with the caveat about putting place names in keywords. So now let's go and use this thing in a practical application. Let's keyword a couple of pictures. Here we have some pictures that I downloaded from Unsplash, and Unsplash does not put any metadata on its pictures, which is kind of tragic because we don't know anything about these turtle guys. But let's just select them and forge ahead and we'll see if we can keyword these people or will we, these turtles, excuse me, or at least we'll pretend to. So we're looking at these things and the one on the right is an African spurred tortoise. So I'm going to type in tort and I have a whole bunch of tortoise choices, none of which are African spurred tortoises, and our other two pictures are something else altogether. So let's just pretend that we got a Texas tortoise on our hands. And here we go. Here's the path for our Texas tortoise. It includes the scientific name of said tortoise. It includes the scientific name of tortoise. And you'll notice that synonyms, which are in green here, appear one column below their parent. So this thing is the synonym for tortoise, and that is the synonym for Texas tortoise. And as we move back up this path, we have reptilia as a synonym for reptile. And these guys are all wildlife and they're all animals. And holy moly, I didn't hit the clear button and I've I've illustrated my own point. So we'll remember to clear this. And we'll double click on our Texas tortoise. So there he is in the collection. I could add more keywords to this collection. I can even type keywords in the collection. But remember, we don't want to do that. You would never want to type a keyword if you can choose a keyword from your controlled vocabulary. And when we're happy with what's in our collection, we can apply it, close our dialog, and here we go. We have that great long bunch of keywords applied to all three of our turtle pictures. And I'm pretty sure that none of these turtles are a Texas tortoise, but that's all right. We'll fix that in a few minutes. Let's go back to our structured keywords panel and talk about our controlled vocabulary keyword list for a minute. And I'll try to form a habit to remember to clear that collection every time I open this panel. Okay, we have in this panel load and save buttons. They work just like the load and save buttons anywhere else in Photo Mechanic. And trust me, all the work that you've put into your controlled vocabulary of keywords, you're going to want to back it up. So there you have it. You can save out your keywords to back them up. You can use the load button to restore your set of keywords if you've changed something and you want to go back or if you've moved your control vocabulary to a new machine. And we have yet another button, Merge. Merge is really pretty powerful. Your controlled vocabulary is going to change over time. It's going to evolve, and unfortunately, it's going to grow. That is just the nature of the thing. What your Merge button allows you to do is it allows you to get maybe even a whole new controlled vocabulary or perhaps to edit or add to your current one and merge the two together. In other words, you can add your updates 
to your existing controlled vocabulary without overwriting the whole thing and without going to a text editor and cutting and pasting to put in all of the new things that you want. We'll do an example of that. Here, in this hierarchy, we have categories of keywords that I use now and again for different topics. What's not in this list, it's deliberately not in this list because I deleted it for this demo, is my subset of keywords for screenshots. And I do a lot of screenshots for my blog. So what I have done is I have taken the list of screenshots that we saw in the last video when we were working in the edit keyword dialog. I've taken that list and I've marked it up in the format for photo mechanic structured keywords. Now, here's a file that's in that format. And this is actually the family snapshots. In this particular case, at the very top, this is the leftmost column, the keyword is family. One column in, we have more keywords. But notice at the top, here we have what would be a keyword, but it's in straight brackets. Straight brackets in the structured keyword dialog denote a label. It will appear in the dialog, but it will not appear as a keyword. And by my own convention, I've added a tilde to labels so that when I glance in the dialog, I know what's a label and what's a keyword. And then below each level, we have new keywords. In my family, we have cats. And we have three cats. We have four, actually. So we'll add a cat in a minute. Here is a synonym. Synonyms are enclosed in curly brackets. And they're one column to the right of their parents, the words that they're synonyms for. So, okay. I took that bit of knowledge and I took my keywords for screenshots from the other dialog. And I just indented them so that they would be structured into columns. And I put in a couple of synonyms. I know that if I'm doing a how-to, it's a blog post. So I'll do blogs as a synonym to how-tos. Screenshots in plural follows the convention in my collection that I decided on. But I know that I've got a bunch of old photos where screenshot is singular, so I'm doing that as a synonym as well. And I know that I want this to go into my label of ZZ Carl miscellaneous keywords. So thus, I built this little text file. And it's just a simple little text file. And if you were doing hundreds or thousands of keywords, you probably wouldn't want to go there. Or if you were wanting to edit one keyword in a list of thousands of keywords, you wouldn't want to go there. And we'll take a look at that in a moment. But here we are. We're looking at our keywords. We're highlighted at the top of that path of keywords. So let's take this file and we'll merge it in. And there we go. As quickly as I can click the button, here I have a new entry for screenshots in its hierarchical. And if I go to how to's, I have all the different kinds of software that I might do how to's of. And if I double click one, I get the whole path the software, the synonym that tells me that all my how to's are blogs, screenshot, and its synonym screenshots ready to go. So that is pretty cool and it's pretty powerful. Now, some of these keyword lists that you see over here, 
these structured keyword lists are downloaded or purchased. This one was downloaded for free on the internet. This one called Animals actually ships with Photo Mechanic, and it's a sample from David Reichs at controlledvocabulary.com, and you can buy these. And they're typically about $80 a set, and there are usually thousands of keywords having to do with some particular taxonomy in these things. Now, I said early on when we were contemplating keywords that store-bought keyword lists usually don't excite me very much, but depending on what you're doing and if you can find a list that meets your needs, this might be right up your alley. So once we've done that and we've merged in our new keywords, we're going to go back and we're going to save out a backup because that you've you're going to invest a tremendous amount of effort in that list of controlled vocabulary keywords. Now, what happens if we want to edit our keyword list? Do we want to go back to that text file and search and find our way into the text file and count over in tabs? No, we don't want to do that at all. So we can edit right in this dialog and then save out our edits with the save button. So let's add our missing cat. If we go to cats, we right click. We get a pop-up menu of choices. We can create a child item, a synonym, a sibling item, or we can take a given item in the list and we can change its type. We can change it to a synonym or we can change it to a category, which is a label. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a child for cats. And there we go. We get a field where we can type in the name of the missing cat. And it's as simple as that. We can add synonyms. We can change synonyms to keywords, keywords to synonyms, keywords to labels. Basically do pretty much anything we want to do. Now, if I just right-click in an open place in a column. I get add item, and then I can type in a name for the item, and then I can change its type. And in this case, I've just made dogs be a synonym for family, so I really don't want to do that. So I'll just delete it. That's where you're going to do most of your editing in your controlled vocabulary keyword list. Clear? I sound like I'm flying a plane. Clear? Okay. There's another way to call the structured keywords dialog. The structured keywords dialog can be called from the flyout in the IPTC editor here, or perhaps even more importantly, it can be called from the same place in the stationary pad. There we go. Structured keywords. Now, the structured keywords dialog that you get this way is exactly the same as the structured keywords dialog that we saw before, except for one thing. In the lower right corner, it does not have apply to selected for the keyword, the path, and the collection. In the IPTC editor or in the stationary pad, we're only going to apply the keywords to one picture or one template. So the way this one works is you put your keywords in your collection and you apply. And there you go. And this gives you the same freedom to apply your keywords to your stationary pad and do all those same things that you can do with your stationary pad that you can do with flat keywords. You can apply the keywords into a template. You can clear the pad, turn off everything except the keywords field. You can then append those keywords. 
to a selection of photos, or you can overwrite the existing keywords in a selection of photos. And that brings up another topic that we should discuss. What happens if you mess up? Structured keywords give you the opportunity, when you make a mistake, to go big. I mean, look at all of these things. A double click got us that whole pile of keywords. What do we do if we went wrong someplace? Well, let's go take a look at our turtles. Remember, we keyworded these turtles to be Texas tortoises or some such thing, and they definitely are not. So this would be a good opportunity to look at correcting our mistakes. The first thing you can do is pretty obvious. So let's select this turtle. And we're going to go to our stationary pad. And we'll just start over. We'll call a do-over here. We'll clear our stationary pad. We will turn on only the keyword field. We will turn off the append function. And we'll apply it. Now, if the mistake we made could be fixed by simply adding a keyword or two, obviously, we could go back, make sure that we turn append on here or in the structured keywords dialog, and just simply append some keywords. Let's look at something else. Let's take these two pictures and we will go in the keywords and we will take Texas tortoise and we will copy it. Now we're going to go to find and replace and we will add Texas tortoise and we will turn it into unknown turtle. Now we'll look at our settings. Let's do in selected items. We're going to search in the IPTC metadata. Selection, preserve selection is probably fine for right now. We don't need a case sensitive search. And we will hit none to turn off all of the IPTC fields. And we will just turn keywords back on. And we hit replace. And boom. We have now replaced Texas tortoise with unknown turtle, which is probably slim comfort for these three turtles, none of whom are Texas tortoises. But we've illustrated the idea. If you make a mistake in keywords or you want to go back and change some keywords, you have some tools to do it. Now, it should be noted that in Photo Mechanic, in all of the keywords tools, all of the keywords lists are lists that Photo Mechanic uses to apply keywords. Apart from overwriting or using find and replace, Photo Mechanic will not affect or alter or disturb existing keywords. Now that is distinct from digital asset management programs and particularly in this case Lightroom, which is both kinds of programs. In Lightroom, if you go back and edit keywords, you could very well be affecting existing keywords. That is probably not what you want and probably very dangerous. But on the other hand, it might be what you want. And I understand the logic of making that work that way in a system that also works as a dam. Before we close our look at structured keywording in Photo Mechanic, we have a quirk that we need to talk about. So we'll close that. You'll probably recognize this photo because we've used it in demos before. Now, Photo Mechanic is very often used in front of other programs. In a professional environment, Photo Mechanic might be used with Photoshop as the image editor. 
in front of a professional dam, something like Wyden or Merlin. A lot of photographers use Lightroom as their dam. And Photo Mechanic is used in front of it while you're working in a files and folders world. And once you have photos that you want to commit to your miniature dam, Lightroom, you move over to Lightroom. Now, Lightroom itself has pretty decent metadata editing capabilities. And it's entirely possible that you'll work with metadata in Lightroom. Lightroom has a hierarchical keywording function. It's not anywhere near as nice as Photoshop's, but it's there. And you may have noticed in previous videos, I actually recommend when people are working in Lightroom only to use the flat keywording in Lightroom. Here's why. For reasons known only to Adobe, they wanted to have a function in Lightroom that would allow hierarchical keywords to stay hierarchical. They wanted you to be able to go back and edit keywords on existing photos in a hierarchical manner. And that's kind of understandable because Lightroom serves a number of different functions. Lightroom is an image editor. Lightroom is a digital asset management system. Lightroom is a metadata manipulation tool. It does all of these things. It essentially flattens all of those functions that would be separate tools in other environments like Photoshop and Photo Mechanic in front of a dam system and pushes them all together. So I have some sympathy for them. But what they did was they created a special field in the XMP data block to hold hierarchical keywords expressed as nodes with pipes separating the terms in the nodes. So if you apply a hierarchical keyword path to a photo in Lightroom, your keywords will be written into three places instead of the normal two in your file. Normally the keywords field exists in the IIM data block and it also exists in the XMP data block. Lightroom adds another XMP field for hierarchical keywords and it writes the keywords into all three places. Now, Photo Mechanic has the perplexing job of reading that and deciding what to do. And Photo Mechanic is very concerned, or Photo Mechanic's developers are very concerned with preventing data loss. And they're very concerned with keeping things synchronized. So the way they chose to deal with this is to go ahead and read Lightroom's proprietary hierarchical keyword field and simply add it to the existing keywords. So what you get is this piece of untidiness that we're looking at right here. The keyword path for this picture is flowers, garden, family, home. It's actually family, home, garden, flowers, but we've just sorted it here. To which Lightroom has added each node, family and then home, family and then home and then garden, family and home and garden and flowers. And here we are. Now, this is really untidy, but it doesn't actually hurt anything. Think about it. What do keywords do? Well, a keyword is just there to match a search term and return a picture that might not have that search term in the caption or someplace else. So does it matter if garden is in your keyword once or three times? No, it really doesn't. And because Photo Mechanic abhors duplicates, if you round trip this picture back through Lightroom and back again, it won't get any worse. Now, at this point, I haven't actually done anything. But if I commit this metadata in Photo Mechanic, you know, it has now taken all of those keywords from 
both of the sources, all three sources really in the data sets, and it's merged them together into this bunch of keywords. Now, if I okay this, something interesting will happen. Let's go over here and we will look at the output from a couple of commands in EXIF tool. Actually, an output, the output from the same command run twice in EXIF tool. Here on the top, we have this flower photo as it was saved from Lightroom. And we can see here that in the IPTC IIM data block, we have four keywords, flowers, garden, family, home. In the XMPDC subject data block, which is more or less a duplicate, we have the same four keywords, flowers, garden, family, home. Here we have Lightroom's very own hierarchical subject field. And you'll notice in the XMP, the fields are called subject. And in the IIM, the field is called keywords. For us, the field is always keyword. That's behind the scenes. Anyway, here we have the nodes. Family, family, and then home, family, and then home, and then garden, family, and then home, and then garden, and then flowers. Oh my goodness. Now, after I committed metadata edits to that photo in Photo Mechanic, let's see what's happened. Here, in the IPTC IIM field, we have flowers, garden, family, and home, our original four keywords. But we also have the keywords that Photo Mechanic read from Lightroom's hierarchical keyword field. The nodes, family and home, family and home and garden, family and home and garden and flowers. In the XMPDC subject version of the keywords field, we see exactly the same thing. And back in Adobe's proprietary hierarchical subject field, we see the nodes as they originally applied. So what this means is that if you work with Photo Mechanic in front of Lightroom and you use hierarchical keywording in Lightroom, you will see some untidiness in your metadata and you'll see it in Photo Mechanic. Photo Mechanic chooses to show it to you. Photo Mechanic also chooses to make sure everything is in sync, just in case. And what we see here is the result of that. But the takeaway is that it doesn't look that pretty, but it's not going to hurt anything. And if you round trip the picture back and forth, Photo Mechanic's duplicate stripping function will make sure that you're not going to end up building a thousand word mess in your keywords field. Now, why would you apply hierarchical keywords in Lightroom when the function is so much more sophisticated in Photo Mechanic and so much easier to use? That's a good question indeed. The only answer that I can think of is after the photo has been imported in Lightroom, you're working in Lightroom. It's right there, and that's what you're going to do. So that wraps up our look at hierarchical keywording in Photo Mechanic. Once again, I'm Carl Seibert. Please reach out in the comments here, or on the blog, or on social media. And until next time, mind your metadata.